The coronavirus has now entered a devastating new phase as the World Health Organization declares it a global pandemic. If you are sick or not feeling well, stay home. That was like a watershed moment where everyone was like, oh, this is serious. This is so serious that it's going to affect every facet of everyone's life. Hey, it's me, Sam B. Tonight we're talking about the coronavirus. We canceled our audience to keep everyone safe. To do our part during this pandemic, The Daily Show is not gonna have a live studio audience starting from Monday. We have our staff, crew, and loved ones in here. You know, shout out to us, you know, having a show during a global pandemic. <laughs> <laughs> we did one show this way where all the late night shows were like, okay, we'll do shows without an audience for the time being. And we, that Thursday show, we did. We just had like staff in the audience. Our building was evacuated. The Nobody has gone back to the office since then. We knew we were not going to be able to go back on Monday and, uh, and do a show in the studio. We immediately started figuring out, well, what can we do uh, to keep the show going in any form? And then it was, okay, how fast can we start doing shows remotely? Is that going to be possible? Trevor was the one who was pushing that. He was actually excited about the challenge that presented because this is unprecedented. It was Sam's decision. She really wanted the show to go back on the air. She fought really hard for it. Try me, Tony Hawk. I'll break you like a Kit Kat bar. <laughs> we took one week off and we were back on air the week after that. Yeah. I'm Samantha Bee and I'm just hanging out at my house fully made up. Full Frontal is divided into sort of three sections. There's the writing department, there's the field department, and there's the studio department. And field is sort of where we go out and we make these like short, funny documentaries, like comedic pieces. And that is the part of the show where you're outside the studio. So we can't do that. So we've really been trying to figure out creative ways to do everything we can using Zoom and like using all the tools we have on hand. It changed a lot because we now uh, had to almost entirely pitch jokes either across WhatsApp or through a Zoom uh, conference. And it's hard to pitch jokes across a teleconference. And it's a lot of like, you know, pitching a joke and then uh, what you cut out, what did you say? Normally there's like, it's kind of three rooms with the editors and the AEs and producers working in concert to like cut down this abundance of material into 20 minutes that, that will be on the show. And because like we're all 20 feet apart, you can poke your head out of the office and go, hey, are you working on this? How do you get stuff to the editors who are all at their homes and they all have children and like figure out an edit schedule, like all of that. How do you think creatively within the limitations of like social distancing? In some ways it's like a huge blessing, right? Because then you don't have the time to like be worried about coronavirus because you're just like, how the fuck do I figure out Zoom? What up, yo, it's your boys. We are recording from our respective homes coming to you live from the BX, you know, the fucking vibes. That's right. The first part is like, how do we shoot the show, record the show in a way that looks like a TV show. Just the feat, the technical feat of getting the show ready to launch with two hosts in like two different states, you know, that are like, have to be on television with each other, riffing back and forth, like at the same speed as when they're three feet apart on stage was such like a technical marvel. It's definitely an element of like building the car as we drive, not in a frantic way as much as it is like, okay, we built as much of the car as it takes to drive, and now we're kind of painting it as we go. <laughs> Zoom, it's the app that tells you which of your friends have bookshelves, and the reason every work call now looks like the beginning of the Brady Bunch. Trevor is very good at taking a joke, hearing a joke, and then changing it to suit his voice and to make it funnier. He's able to, you know, take your delivery and be like, that delivery works. Let's just tinker with this, I can say this way, or the wording works better with this delivery. Are you homeschooling your kid? Yeah, yeah, it's going terribly. Now just go back in your room, buddy. Go back in your room. Make mommy a drink. It's a different rhythm of a show. You don't have that um, live performance uh, sort of stage play style of joke where you can tell a joke, wait for an audience laughter. You can play off an audience's either their laughter or their groans. But on the benefit of it, you have a wider range of jokes. Imagine all the people. Imagine you shut the you can uh, count a lot more on editing to take the place of an audience laughter. And we found, I think in the last couple of weeks, to find, we found a better like CRISPR way of editing jokes and take advantage of the wider range of jokes um, that uh, a faster pace of editing allows for. And that I think heightens uh, that comedy more than even being a studio audience. 
It's now the fourth week of us doing our show from home, and honestly, I felt pretty proud of what we've been able to accomplish in the woods. I really admire the way Sam has like pushed forward and like gotten us to push forward and has given us a mission to just like deliver a great show every week and try to like make people laugh a little bit. And I think that's like literally all you can do. People are talking about how it's hard to find humor in this situation, which I don't fully agree. I think the situation is very serious and grave and and perilous but i think what is funny about this like jumps out more clearly than usual because so much of the news is like so patently unfunny coming out of this we learned how these shows for all their slickness and well-produced natures really fundamentally depend on the host and it really is ultimately the host just looking at the camera and talking to uh you the viewer We've just all gotten a little bit better at communicating. We've all figured out how to be slightly more concise. And I think it's exciting to be a part of the moment where you're trying to innovate and like be creative and tell jokes in a new way. This is such a hard and bad time globally that it, the hope that we can be that kind of like little boost for someone else is like very heartening to me. We're at least giving them an opportunity to laugh while they're maybe learning something. That has definitely reinvigorated me, I, knowing that this is a blessing to be able to make jokes about these uh, terrible things and to find laughter and joy uh, among these moments of pain and, and solitude. I think there's one thing I'm going to take away from this is just refocusing on that, which God, we need more than ever right now. How you get off this thing? It's the the leave meeting button in the right bottom hand corner. Wait, you say leave meeting? Where the? Oh, there it is. I see it right there.